There was a young lady, and she was uh, abducted by uh, some men and thrown inside of a van and kidnapped. And they, uh, after they got, after the, after the people got through abusing her, they shot her, left her for dead, and uh, she survived. But uh, she was blind, had permanent scars left on her body. And uh, she, uh, she was a Christian. And uh, they there was an interview because uh, she seemed so joyous and, and happy. And uh, there was an interview uh, about her and, and they, they asked her, uh, you know, uh, how can you be how you are when these individuals took so much from you? And she says, well, my trust is in the Lord, for one thing. And she also said that these individuals took one night of my life. And if I give them any more than that, I'm a fool. And there's times where we allow things in our life to penetrate our soul. It could be somebody else has hurt us, or it could be something, you know, that's happened. It could be a tragic event. It could be, uh, you know, a trial over here, uh, uh, you know, a, a death in the family over here, uh, a, a hurt over here. And like I said, you know, you know, Satan has a job. He makes sure everybody gets hurt in church. Yes. And, you know, we need to understand that, uh, that uh, when... Um, uh, when we trust in God, when we uh, say yes to Jesus, we pick up our cross and follow Him. We don't have uh, an agenda after that except to follow the Lord Jesus and to believe on Him. And you know, uh, they, uh, they took some things from our Lord Jesus. They took His life and, and they, they whipped Him and, and they beat Him beyond recognition and different things and they nailed Him to a cross and they planted a crown of thorns on His head. Uh, but you know, He did that in the will of the Father. You say, man, how could that be the will of God for a person to go through so much suffering and different things? And yet Jesus rose from the dead the third day. And we need to understand that it doesn't matter what we go through in this life. We are going to heaven if we are a believer. Amen? Amen. It doesn't matter what trials come our way. If we believe in the Lord Jesus Christ, He's coming to get us Amen. one of these days. If we are citizens of the kingdom, we are not inhabitants of the earth. We need to understand that when we put our faith in the Lord, we put our faith in the one who's been there, done that, and rose again from the dead. We need to uh, put our faith in Him. And, and so, a lot of times, you know, we get, uh, uh, we get hung up on the trials of life and the hurts of life and different things. And, and we start doing uh, crazy things. And, and you know, uh, we, have, we see these uh, commercials on TV. Man, if you're depressed, take a pill. Uh, you know, uh, you're, you'll commit suicide. Well, I guess you'll quit being depressed then. But anyway, uh, <laughs> you ever see the... You know, the uh, side effects of that stuff. Well, you know, and I'm saying, man, I know I want to take that stuff. You know? <laughs> Duh. You know, I mean, it's, it's crazy. Uh, John chapter 7. I'm going to be back in there again a little bit. John chapter 7, verses 37 through 39. John chapter 7. I preached on this a little last week. In the last day, the great day of the feast, Jesus stood and cried, saying, If any man thirst, let him come to unto me and drink. He that believeth on me, as the Scripture has said, out of his belly shall flow rivers 
of living water. But this spake he of the Spirit, which they that believe on him should receive, for the Holy Ghost was not yet given, because that Jesus was not yet glorified. Okay, so uh, Jesus is telling them, if you thirst, and there's a lot of people, you know, uh, he's not talking about physical thirst, and we've all experienced physical thirst. We've all experienced, you know, uh, we, uh, we, we get a dry uh, mouth, and especially out here in the desert. I, you know, it, it's kind of, it kind of cracked me up, you know, because in, in seminary preaching school, they, uh, they, they teach uh, back east, uh, they teach uh, pastors, you know, upcoming pastors, not to take water into the pulpit with them. You know, because uh, other, the other church members will see it and, and they will, you know, uh, and different things. And, you know, it's all a bunch of psychology <laughs> stuff. I've seen these, these preacher boys come out here from other states back east and uh, they get in the pulpit out here in Nevada and they get to where they can't talk because they're so thirsty. And somebody has to go get them some water, you know, because they were taught something that didn't work. Now, um, and, and we can get that way in our own lives and in our own souls. We can get uh, thirsty in our own souls. Now, um, Jesus said, if any thirst, <coughs> let them come unto me and drink. You know, and uh, uh, there's a lot of times you say, well, you know, I'm thirsty, so I think I'm going to go try to try to try to go to church this Sunday or I'm going to try to do this or I'm going to try this I'm going to try to pray an extra prayer this this day or or something like that but what we need to understand is we need to go to the source of living water we need to go to the source because he is the one that gives us living water and it's not just a little trickle he's not just going to come and he says uh, uh, okay here's some water <laughs> He's not going to do that. I'm going to take a drink. <laughs> now, he's not going to do that. He says out of your innermost being, out of your belly, is going to flow rivers of living water. He told the woman at the well, you're going to be like a well of living water springing up into everlasting life. This isn't going to be, you know, a little sprinkling of some, I mean, somebody, uh, you know, comes up to us and, and maybe they'll, uh, they'll come up to it and slap you. Gee, slapped me across the head last night <laughs> for, for no reason. I mean, oh, sure, that's not true. No, there, there was a pretty good reason for it. <laughs> But, um, but you know, somebody comes up and slaps us, we ought to just spew Holy Ghost all over them. You know what I'm saying? I mean, we ought to be so full of the Holy Ghost, it ought to be like a river of water flowing up into everlasting life. And you know, a lot of times uh, in, in our churches, the reason why we don't do that is because we're thirsty. And we don't have the living water inside of us. And we don't have a, 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 the Holy Ghost inside of us. And, and we, we're trying to do this religious thing in the flesh. And, you know, it ends up, we're not working. And people end up discouraged and say, well, I'm not going to go back to church because it didn't work for me. Well, the reason it didn't work, because you didn't drink of the water of life. And His name is Jesus. Amen. You yeah, see, sir. we need to understand that. And so, uh, uh, also it says uh, in, um, uh, let's go to... Um, Revelation chapter 22 and 17. Chapter 22, 17, Revelation. And the Spirit and the Bride say, Come. And let him that heareth say, Come. And let him that is a thirst come. And whosoever will, let him take of the water of life freely. Mm. All right. So we have this, this water of life that we can drink of. Now go back to Revelation 21.6. Revelation 21.6. And he said unto me, it is done. I am the Alpha and Omega, the beginning and the end. I will give unto him that is a thirst of the fountain of the water of life freely. <laughs> You don't have to buy it. I mean, the Lord is just going to give it to you. It's, you know, salvation is free, but it's going to cost you something, isn't it? It's going to cost you your life. Salvation is free, but you're going to have to give it to the Lord, right? Now, Isaiah 55 is where we're going to be this morning. I guess we're all over the place. But anyway, Isaiah 55. 
Let's go there. Isaiah 55. Isaiah is saying here, Ho, everyone that is that thirsteth, come to uh, ye to the waters, and uh, he that hath no money, come ye buy and eat. Yea, come and buy wine and milk without money and without price. So is he, what's uh, Isaiah talking about here? Is he talking about physical needs, or is he talking about the thirst of the soul? You see? Thirst of the soul. Yeah, the thirst of the soul, right? Now, a lot of people say, well, I've got to do this. A lot of people say, well, I've got to spend thousands of dollars on therapy. <laughs> or something. I got, I got the therapy for it. I got the counsel for it. His name's Jesus. Come on. Okay? I, we need to understand some things here. Because if we come to Jesus, as the scripture has said, out of our belly is going to flow rivers of living water. Mm. So Isaiah 55 says, Ho, everyone that thirsteth, come ye into the waters. And verse 2, Wherefore do you spend money on that which is not bread, and your labor for that which satisfieth not? Hearken diligently unto me, and eat ye that which is good, and let your soul delight itself in fatness. You know, I mean, I'm kind of fat on the outward. You know, my brother's fat, but I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. But uh, I've got pictures where I'm fatter than him, though. So I mean, it's just, you know. but anyway, yeah. Uh, uh, but we need to be fat on the inside, don't we? We need our souls to prosper. Now, now, just uh, think in your own mind. How many uh, do you think is here that has a thirsty soul this morning? You know, how many here uh, is uh, has got something going on in their life to where they need refreshment? They need, uh, they need some, uh, some refreshment in the soul. Otherwise, they're going to lose control. Right? I mean, that's the way it is in the physical, too. We can get so thirsty, we can, we can die. I mean, three days without water, you know. And, and, uh, uh, now, now, my cat. We proved this. Can go three and a half weeks without water. We went on vacation one time, and you, you've been over my house. You know Target the cat, the big white cat with a, with a black spot on her. She got locked in Jane's shit, and we were gone on vacation. And when we came back, we couldn't find Target. And finally, we heard her in that shit, and we went and opened the shit, and she was about half dead. I, th I was surprised she was, she was alive. She had, she had been in that shed all that time with that water. And that cat, we gave her some water, and she, I mean, she drank for like five minutes. She was so thirsty. She had been in that shed, and she was skinny and, uh, and everything like that. And uh, she was about, she had about had it. I, I didn't know if she was going to make it or not, you know. And, uh, but she did. She's still, she's still kicking today. But did she learn her lesson? No, nope, she'll go hide in the garage. And <laughs> she did not learn her lesson. So Oh, I mean, cats are they're they're weird anyway, right? You ever try herding cats? Gene I mean, has actually done this. Uh, we had we had a, a neighbor uh, neighbors uh, it, it moved out in, back in two thousand eight, and we had all these cats in the neighborhood and. Uh, we had cats everywhere. We were infested with them. And so I caught all these cats, and there were some baby cats, and mama cats, and all kinds of stuff. And, and, uh, and Jean had them in the, cage, the cages out front, and she would uh, put these cats on strings and so they wouldn't run off again and clean those cages. Now she did this. Uh, for, and, and she was, uh, my neighbor called her the crazy cat lady, you know, <laughs> and different things like that. But uh, uh, they gave cats away down at Walmart and all kinds of stuff. And, uh, but uh, I, I have actually seen her herd cats, and so it's possible, uh, but uh, it's not recommended. But anyway, um, 
But anyway, what was I talking about? Oh, thirst. That's what I was talking about. <laughs> <All right. laughs> uh, now, it says here in a verse, uh, after it says, in, uh, Let your soul delight itself in fatness, verse 3, Incline your ear. Now, what do you think of when you hear the word incline your ear? Listen. Pay attention, son, yeah. like Foghorn Leghorn says, right? <laughs> All right. Incline your ear. Come unto me. Okay, he's okay, same thing. He's saying the same thing in Isaiah. Come unto me. Here and your what? Your soul shall live. You ever you ever notice people with a with a bad soul? I mean, don't point or nothing, but I mean uh, <laughs> you know, I mean you can, it says that the eyes are the windows of the soul, right? I mean, you can look at somebody sometimes and, and see what's inside of them. I mean, you ever see people with real mean eyes or real evil eyes, you know? All you got to do is watch CNN. But anyway, <laughs> but anyway, uh, you can kind of tell what's inside. And you can tell somebody that is sweet on the inside, right? Because their eyes will twinkle and different things like that. And so, uh, anyway, uh, the soul uh, needs to prosper. And so, uh, and, and I will make an everlasting covenant with you, even the sure mercies of David. Now, the sure mercies of David is Jesus, right? And we need to make, he's going to make that everlasting covenant with us. He's going to give us everlasting life. And so we need to understand that, that when we come to him and we take a drink uh, from him, and if we follow him, as the scripture has said, we're going to have everlasting life. Verse 4, Behold, I give them, uh, I have given him for a witness to the people, a leader and commander to the people. Behold, thou shalt call a nation that thou knowest not, and nations that knew not thee shall run unto thee because of the Lord thy God, for the Holy One of Israel, for he hath glorified thee. Then it says in verse 6, Seek you the Lord while he may be found. Call you upon him while he is near. And we need to understand that when we come to church and, and we feel the nearness of God, that's a good time to call upon Him. And we need to understand that when we seek for Him, we will find Him. We need to understand that when we will knock on the door, He will open the door. Amen. We need to understand uh, some things like that. Because, you know, a lot of times says, well, you know, I tried that once and, and it didn't work and different things like that. Well, you know, you just keep seeking. You keep knocking. You keep uh, you know, seeking the Lord and you keep pursuing after the Lord. Lord, because why? I'm going to quote this verse. I, I quoted this Wednesday night. Uh, uh, D. A. Carson has a quote, and we need to pursue righteousness, right? And the, the quote is this: People do not drift toward holiness. I mean, a lot of times, you know, people get say, "Well, I signed the Baptist card. I even went through the waters of baptism," but then they do nothing to pursue the Lord. I don't know how many people I baptized that didn't come back to church. And they didn't pursue the Lord. And so people do not drift toward holiness apart from grace-driven effort. See, God gives us the grace and the desire. That's what grace is. It's the desire and the power to do God's will. But if we don't put that desire and that power to do God's will, it does not do us any good because people do not drift toward holiness apart from grace-driven effort. People do not gravitate toward godliness, prayer. People do not gravitate toward obedience to Scripture or faith or delight in the Lord. We naturally drift toward compromise and call it tolerance. We naturally drift toward disobedience and call it freedom. We naturally drift toward superstition and call it faith. And that's a quote by D.A. Carson. And I think that's accurate because a lot of times I'm glad you are here this morning seeking the Lord. I'm glad you came uh, to sit under the ministry of the Word because God is here. Because God, it says, seek you the Lord, verse 6, 
And Isaiah 55, Seek you the Lord while he may be found. Call you upon him while he is near. Let the wicked forsake his way and the unrighteous man his thoughts and let him return unto the Lord and he will have mercy upon him and to our God for he will abundantly pardon. You know, if we come to the Lord, He's not going to sit there and play uh, and, and, and mess around and say, well, I don't know if I want to forgive you or not. <coughs> you know, what kind of God would that? He said, He's going to abundantly pardon you. I'm glad for that word abundantly in there, aren't you? He's going to abundantly pardon. And uh, it says in verse 8, For my thoughts are not your thoughts, neither are your ways my ways, saith the Lord. And people uh, get caught up in this trap all the time in their own soul. They say, well, God must be uh, like I am. You know, and, you know, and, and I've heard people say, uh, you know, well, my God wouldn't send anybody to hell. Well, my God wouldn't do any of this. My God would. I said, I'm sure your God wouldn't. Uh, wouldn't. He, he doesn't exist. So how's that? You need to, we need to figure out who the God of the Bible is. We need to figure out who the God of Scripture is. And we need to believe on Him as the Scripture has said. <coughs> And so it says, so my thoughts are not your thoughts, neither are, my way, are, are your ways my ways, saith the Lord. For as the heavens are higher than the earth, so are my ways higher than your ways and my thoughts than your thoughts. Scientists have not even fit, found how high the heavens are. They keep discovering new stuff. I, I think God's up there messing with them. You know, <laughs> he, I think he still creates stuff for them to find. You, you know what I'm saying? If I was God, I'd do that. You know. <laughs> Amen, Pastor. Yeah. Well, God's still in the creation business, right? Yes, yeah, right. Every time somebody gets saved, He creates a new creature in Him. Yeah, He's still in the creation business. Now, verse 10 says, For as the rain cometh down, and the snow from heaven, and returneth not thither, but watereth the earth, and maketh it bring forth bud, and bud, and it, that it may be, give seed to the sower, and bread to the eater, so shall my word be that goeth forth out of my mouth. It shall not return unto me void, but it shall accomplish that which I please, and it shall prosper in the things whereunto I sent it. If you're here this morning, the word is going to prosper your soul. I can say that with confidence. Why? Because the word says it. <laughs> Verse 12. For you shall go out with joy and be led forth with peace. The mountains and the hills shall break forth before you into singing, and all the trees of the fields shall clap their hands. I love that. We sing that song. Sing that. Instead of the thorn shall come up the fir tree. But here in Fernley, instead of the goat head will yeah. come up the fir tree. <laughs> and instead of the briar shall come up the myrtle tree. And it shall be to the Lord for a name, for an everlasting sign that shall not be cut off. You know, we can call upon the name of the Lord while He may be found, can't we? We can call upon His name and we can go to the Word of God and figure out who God is. You see, because uh, the Word of God does not go out void. The Word of God, if we get into the Lord and we seek the Lord in the Word of God, you know, somehow or another, uh, the living Word of God, it gets inside of us. Somehow the living Word of God gets inside of us and transforms our heart and transforms our mind and prospers our soul. Amen. You see. But a lot of people come dragging in here. Oh, Pastor Curtis, boy, I had a hard time this week. I want you to lay a good one on me. Yeah. You ain't been eating this week, have you? You ain't been drinking this week, have you? All right, when people come in, you know, and, and, and uh, you know, they, they've, uh, they, yeah, they've had a hard time. They've got a few dents in their helmet of salvation. They've got a few flaming arrows sticking out their shield of faith uh, and different things. And, and, and they says, you know, Pastor Curtis, I've had a hard time. The devil has come at me this week, but I come to the house of word, uh, the Lord to worship. And I'm here to worship. I'm here to worship the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. And I've had a hard time, yes, but the shield of faith that quenched all the fiery darts of the wicked, the helmet of salvation protected my mind. You see, a lot of people, you know, we got this thing turned around backwards. We need to be, uh, we need to be on the offensive. You know, what, what is the sword of the Spirit? And the sword of the Spirit, which is the Word of 
Your sword is your fighting instrument. Right? Jeremiah says, Cursed is he that holdeth back his sword from blood. And he that work, doeth the work of the Lord deceitfully. Jer and it's in Jeremiah. And uh, I think it's in 3810, something like that. The Word of God does not go out void. And we need, I want you to understand this morning that when you call upon the name of the Lord, when you go to the Word of God, I don't care how, I don't care what your story is, it could be like the, the young woman that lost her eyesight and had permanent scars on her. She wasn't going to give up because she trusted in God. You see, Jesus didn't give up on us when he went to the cross. He didn't tell the thief at the cross when he called upon him to remember him in paradise. He didn't tell him, find your own way of salvation. I'm too busy here dying. Mm -hmm. He didn't tell him that. You know what Jesus said? He says, this day you'll be with me in paradise. Mm -hmm. Even on the cross, he was saving people. Why? Because he was Jesus. <laughs> he couldn't be anybody else. True. He had to be the Savior. And you know, Jesus died for us. And then he tells us, if any man come after me, let him pick up his cross daily and follow me. And I just want to ask you this morning, are you thirsty? Are you thirsty? I'm going to close with Psalm 42. Psalm 42. As the heart panted after the water rose, so panteth my soul after thee, O God. Now the psalmist, I don't know who the psalmist was here, uh, sons of Korah, uh, uh, you know, David wrote a lot of the songs, but uh, as the deer, the heart, that's a heart as a deer, uh, pants after the water, uh, let my soul uh, pant after thee, O God. Verse 2, my soul thirsteth for God, for the living God. When shall I come and appear before God? My tears have been my meat day and night, while they continually say to me, where is your God? Yeah, this, this soul was going through some hard time. This soul was crying. Where is your God? When I remember these things, I pour out my soul in me, for I had gone with the multitude. I had, I had went with him to the house of God. This guy went to church with the voice of joy and praise of the multitude that kept holy day. This guy was trying his best to uh, be righteous. This guy was trying to, uh, trying to be holy and different things. He was uh, in, the, in the body, if you will. So he asked himself, why art thou cast down? Verse 5. O my soul, and why art thou disquieted within me? Hope thou in God, for I shall yet praise him for the help of his countenance. He's talking to his own soul now. He says, soul... Straighten up. Quit your whining and serve God. Right? And so uh, I shall yet praise Him. Verse 6. Oh my God, my soul is cast down within me. Therefore I will remember thee from the land of Jordan and the Hermonites and from the uh, hill Mizar. Deep calleth into deep at the noise of thy water spouts. All thy waves and thy billows are gone over me. And you know, so the depths of God. Does anybody understand the depths of their own soul? And does anybody understand the depths of God? 
Deep calleth into deep. Because God calls unto our soul. God calls unto ourselves. And we need to understand that's God knocking on our heart's door. And we need to let Him in. Amen. Deep calls unto deep. Verse 8. Yet the Lord will command His loving kindness in the daytime. And in the night His song shall be with me. Uh, be with me and my prayer unto God of my life. I will say unto God my rock. Why hast thou forgotten me? Why go I mourning because of the oppression of the enemy? You ever had the oppression of the enemy get on you? As with a sword in my bones, mine enemies re reproach me, while they say daily to me, Where is your God? Why are you cast down on my soul? And why art thou disquieted within me? Hope thou in God, for I shall yet praise him, who is the health of my countenance and my God. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. If anyone's a thirst, let him come to Jesus and drink. Because our, th our soul, we can be right here in church. We can be singing the songs. We can be worshiping the saints. And be dying of thirst. And I don't want you to die of thirst. I want you to take a drink. I'm going to do my best to serve up the water. But you got to drink. You see. The water of the Word. The first miracle that Jesus did was he turned water into wine. He said to the servants, fill up the water pots with water. Then he turned it into wine. You've got to give something God, God to work with. You have to pursue righteousness. And when we pursue righteousness, because of the grace God has given us, the strength and the power that God has given us, then we will reap the reward, right? But a lot of people... They just want uh, kind of a, a miracle to happen. And God can do all that, I understand. They just want, want kind of a miracle to happen in their lives. And, and uh, you know, things to, to be peachy keen the rest of their life. And, uh, you know, happy and everything like that. When all the time, God is reaching out to you. And said, hey, come unto me. All you that are weak and heavy laden. And I'll give you rest. Yeah. And and uh, so let's do that this morning. Let's bow our heads and close our eyes just for a minute. And I, I just I just I know there's a few of you here this morning, but there's some souls here that are thirsty. <coughs> there's some souls here that need refreshment, and I want God to refresh your soul. And so what, what I'm uh, asking you to do is take a drink. Take a drink of Jesus. And believe on Him as the Scripture has said. There is nothing in our lives that a good old-fashioned dose of the Holy Ghost won't fix. It'll be like a river of water flowing out of us. It'll be like a well springing up into everlasting life. He will abundantly pardon I mean, he'll back his dump truck of grace up to us and dump it on us. He'll abundantly pardon if we'll come to him, his way. I know that we go through trials. And I know that when we go through trials, we think our trial is worse than anybody else's. And it probably is at the time. But I want you to know that you can just speak to your own soul like the psalmist did. And say, soul... You hope in the Lord. You don't have to do everything your soul tells you to do. You need to put your trust in the Lord and tell your soul to knock some stuff off. You see? Because uh, uh, that's what it takes. 
And I just wonder, if there's somebody here this morning, I, I want your every eye closed and everything like that, but if, if, if you say, Pastor Curtis, I just want you to pray for me. Uh, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to pray for you that you'll get into the Word of God, that you'll take a drink of the Word of God, and that your soul would, pro would will prosper. Because I can't do it for you. I can preach you. I can do all that stuff, but, and, and I can teach you. We got Sunday school class. We, we started a new Sunday school class this morning. And I just want you to understand that uh, that is here for the prosperity of the soul. So, so and if you, if you wave at me or something and say, Hey, Pastor Curtis, I need you to pray for me, uh, I promise I'll pray for you. I know there's some I'm praying for anyway, but so praise the Lord. Because I know we never like to admit it. Sometimes our soul gets pretty parched. Our soul gets pretty uh, desperate. And we said, man, I don't know if I'm going to make it here. Some people's souls get so, so bad, they end their life. Some people's souls get so bad, they harm themselves and different things. And I don't want you to be like that. I want you to be in the Lord. I want your souls to prosper as your pastor. You say, if you have them, I mean, come over, we'll, we'll, do, we'll go through the Bible uh, personally. I mean, there's several people in this congregation that will help out different things. Mm -hmm. Let me pray for you this morning. Father, I just pray in the name of Jesus. That Lord, do we just take a big old drink of you. I pray, Father God, that Lord, as we believe on you, as the scripture has said, that Lord, uh, out of our innermost being, you would fill us with your Holy Spirit. I pray, Father God, that, Lord, we'd be a river and a well, Lord, to a, to a thirsty world. Lord, that we might give them the water of life, too. And, Lord, I pray, Father God, that we would be found in you, not having our own righteousness. Because, Lord, we are going to grow this church in you, because there's no other way to grow it. And Lord, I just pray, Father God, in the name of Jesus this morning, that Lord, you would work miracles in our life. I pray that, Lord, if we're too tired or too weary to take another step, I pray that you'd pick us up and carry us. I pray, Father God, that, Lord, you'd hold us close. And Lord, I pray, Father God, that, Lord, you'd prosper our souls. And Lord, I just thank you and praise you in the name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. God bless you. And